Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred here on Plus TV Africa. We basically call a spade by its name. Today, my focus is on the behavior of the LASMA officials and what their major purpose is. Tolu, on the other hand, speaks on reforming the justice system in Nigeria. Elijah speaks on the necessity of transparency and timeliness in leadership. And finally, Olua Kayode tells us not to blame the federal government, but our state government. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Do stay with us. What's up with LASMA? First, I must state that it's super important that citizens respect officers and officials who have been assigned by relevant authorities to serve us. However, are they really serving us? If I curate all my unpleasant experiences with the officers of the Lagos State Transport Management Authority, I'm sure I'd make another cinema hit. Why have most of these LASMA officers decided to go beyond their job roles to execute what's not within their jurisdiction? Another critical issue that baffles me here is the behavior of a LASMA officer patiently waiting for you to get into trouble and then immediately surface out of the blues to get you booked. Where's the place of service by guiding citizens appropriately on the road usage? This is underlying behavior of extortion, which is commiserate to their perception of you and the type of car you drive. I remember one of them jumping into my car at CMS and charging me um, 250,000 naira. And you know, you know how it ended. When these officers are recruited and onboarded, I'm really concerned. Who, what do they really communicate to them? Or is it just to hit the road, catch people, and wix their cars to their HQ in Oshodi? I don't even want to recount my experience at Oshodi. It was one of my most annoying experiences. Thankfully, I had to use my social capture to get out. But a more serious note, when are we really going to do something about the unruly acts of these LASMA officers? The people that have been put in place to serve us and now more interested in extorting from us. This is one of the many reasons why driving in Lagos is not a pleasurable experience for me and many other people out there I want to believe. I even heard that they give them targets of defaulting vehicles and cars to apprehend. I don't know how true that is, but if that's anything to go by, is that even a proper KPI? If their success comes largely from this, then we can understand why they would rather wait for you to get into trouble than help you get out of trouble. Are we cursed from having a sane society that works? What's the way forward here? Lasma, Kilon Shele. Only you can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car, so you just... <laughs> it's not about having a car. I mean, it's, it's about the experience. I'm just yeah. kidding. It's about the experience, yeah. I'm just kidding. You, you know, for, for me, when you look at Lasma, so many things come to mind. First of all, uh, yes, last month will be blamed, but the state agency or the government that is supposed to do the tagging and, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Putting all the signages on the streets. Have they done it? Hmm. Because I think for, I'll give you an example. Today, when I was coming, I got, okay. Um, when I was leaving VI last week, I stopped by road. I'm not very concerned with the roads on VI. So when I was driving into that street, I had to stop. Just when I was getting in, I stopped and I asked, is this one way? Mm. He said, no. So I went ahead. Now, I, I mean, can I go through? He go said, through, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so I went in. And I, when I asked, I was looking around to see other guys too, how they were reacting. Maybe, hey, this guy won't enter. Go be so I went in. When I finished, came out from where I was going, I had to ask again, can I do a U-turn and go out this way? Or it's one way. Mm. Then he told me, oh, no, if you are driving, this is one way. Go through this way. Now, a typical Lagosian is in a hurry. Mm. Wouldn't stop to ask. Ask questions. Yeah. And there is no signal, nothing showing, no indicating signage. that, no sign anything, At showing all. that mm. this is one way. Mm. So you get in there, and the last more official comes to you, who is 
probably poorly trained, who doesn't have um, a proper ability to, you know, do, com not just communicate, but do analysis, yeah. read, you know, okay. psychological, so, okay, you know, you know, be able know. to, you know, mm. analyze you and see if you're doing, saying the right thing or wrong and just assumes that you're lying or doesn't care and just arrest you. So a lot of things come into being and I dare say that they have in a way become a disappointment to the street, to the road or road users because they are there and they just make life miserable mm. for many people. Mm. And what is even sad in my view is the way they won't carry out their duty. They carry it out with, in my view, less dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so sad. I imagine being, having a father who works at Lasma and seeing him run after buses in such manner, mm. being insulted no, no in no such manner. Yeah. There, there is no dignity, no dignity of service. Of service, you know. thank you. Mm. So they just work. They just go out and just do whatever it is that they feel they have to do. And that is wrong. So in my, the first thing is, first thing first, we're talking Lasma. Lasma, they need to get their acts together. They need to work better from the leadership from angle. the leadership mm. and every other thing i don't know some will say if you speak to some people in last month they'll tell you that they don't have the full uh, liberty to carry out what they want to do mm. that there are some like you suggested all this noise Not about next. you know controls and buttons being pressed on different areas that's one angle so last month is failing in that aspect the second one is the people themselves the drivers road users we are so impatient, so rude, so intolerant at times that it will make an average road user lose his mind, mm -hmm. his or her mind. Let you know the last more officer whose salary is small, who is under the sun, who has been battered, mm -hmm. and who doesn't even know what his child is going to eat because yeah. the salary is not able to. So that is why there's so much road rage between the driver and... Because I've, I've been in a place, I was driving somebody and an officer stopped me. And lady, the person stopped me. It was like, someone in my car said, what's, what's he looking for? What's he looking for? I said, relax. They have a right, they have the to, right stop to stop you. Yeah, sure. You don't have any excuse. No when facts. you are stopped, you must wait for them to carry out. When they are now out overstepping their boundaries, then you can't speak. And even that, an officer of the law, you can't refundle an officer of the law. There's a limit to the kind of words you can use to an officer of the law. Sure. So we need to know all these things. You need to, even no matter what they do, the best way is charge them to court. You get it. Mm. Record it, charge them to court. And that's, you know, that's like a... That's, that's a, like a different... Okay. <laughs> you you get it. Really you know, those are, no, no I've, seen, I've seen people who have tried last month to court and they've won. Oh. Because they stood on their grounds. They had all their it's facts. It's have time. And they are, okay. Exactly. I mean, how will I leave that's my, the thing. my business? I'm, I'm charged. I don't have that kind of time. It's not the time. Yeah. Elijah, it's before come to Tolu, what do you think? Well, what this matter, you see, I agree with him to an extent, especially when he said... He has the right to stop you. Yeah. We citizens, we don't trust government. No, I don't want to use we. A lot because of, a lot of, of yeah. citizens, but I'm not part of the we. <laughs> I don't trust government. Mm. Even yeah. though I know they air in some area, mm. but I choose to trust them for the betterment of our country. Yeah. But a lot of citizens don't trust the government. They don't mm. even understand what governance is. Yeah, exactly. And then the people in government, those people that are in government agencies, police and mm -hmm. the, the last one, they themselves are abusing privileges. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So they don't understand this thing. Number one, like you said, uniform per and we'll extend it now by extension to uniform, uniform personnel, person. not just yes. last month. Mm. You don't have rights as a uniform personnel, you don't have rights because you're a uniform personnel to run for a citizen. Well, of course. At the other hand, too, the citizen too should respect you because mm -hmm. you are respecting the law. They yeah. said governments should be of laws rather than of men. Mm. So for the issue of last month, Education is very important. Okay. They should be properly oriented. And then they should also learn how to communicate effectively with mm. empathy. Let me give you an instance that happened during the lock, not lockdown, not during lockdown. I think after the lockdown, there was this couple of them, that period that they were enf enf enforcing news masks and all these mm. things. It's not last month, this time right? it was police. I don't know if you saw the video trending. Okay. The woman was pregnant. She was in the car with her husband. And the way that she, they said she came down for the car to use her safe. The husband was trying to help her. The next thing was the police appreciated her. Oh, you're not with your nose mask. Blah, 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 blah. The next thing, they refund to her and they wanted to arrest the husband. And the, I have children in the car. Now, let's assume the police were doing their job. But do you have to do it without wisdom? Mm. Without empathy? You see that the woman is pregnant. Why they refund? It's not everything you must always to the want to arrest. Yeah. You mustn't arrest everything. So yeah. I'll give you a scenario. I, I remember I was watching a documentary on, on the internet. A woman was a very poor woman. I think it happened in the US. She was mm. she was so poor, they, they didn't have anything to eat. So she, her yes. child went, I don't know, she yeah. went to the, she and her child, they went mm. to a particular shopping mall to buy something. The process, 
like the, she stole something from the mall. And the shop owner called the police. The policeman came there and saw the woman. After assessing the whole thing, he said, is this matter, it's not matter of arrest, it's hunger. Okay, mm. madam, he paid for what she wanted to buy, what yeah. she stole, and told her not to do it again. That's and let it. her go away. So it's not everything you it's must do. It's emotionally intelligent. Well, I, I we should, we should be wise. Tolu. We should yeah. be wise. Yeah. Tolu? On that note. <laughs> yeah, Tolu, um, what's your experience with mm. this whole shenanigan? Yeah, you know, um, let's not start with my experience. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> I, think nailed, I mean, Victor, you pretty much nailed it on the head. The problem is a problem of, of vision, you know, to start with. The vision is wrong. And once the vision is wrong, the execution is wrong. You know, if someone that is supposed to protect and defend has been given the mandate to attack and punish, naturally, you know, the, everything else goes wrong from there. You know, I think if you go to sign up to Sina claims, you, you know, claims, you find that um, people have been told to protect and defend. Mm. So a citizen will feel safe when this is someone that has been, you know, mandated to protect and defend them. You know, in this case, it's different, you know, because their agenda, their objective, their vision is a bit different. So naturally, the, all the things that they do just align with what they've asked them to do. I think the solution is very simple, to be quite honest. I think they need to depersonalize LASMA. I mean, 90% of the work that LASMA does can be done with technology. Mm. What is done in, in advanced countries. There's, there's, there's nothing to that work. Arrestable, taking one. I mean, those things, everything can be done with technology. Mm. So I understand some people lose their jobs. So perhaps we won't take them to the control room and all yeah. they're doing is just, you know, operating computers. Mm. There's yeah, nothing that last month do. You know, in fact, 80 to 90% of what law enforcement does in Nigeria would help with technology. And, True. you know, I'll speak a little more to it in my, when I talk about justice and the issues that, you know, uh, we're facing with the justice system in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much, <laughs> Tolu. All right, Tolu joins us after the break. Unveiling Lady Justice on reforming the justice system in Nigeria. Lady Justice, you most likely have seen her stretch you in front of a court of law one time or the other. In the event you haven't seen or you don't remember it, she's that lady with her face covered with a veil. Usually she's holding a scale of justice in one hand and a sword in the other hand. The history of Lady Justice dates back to the Roman mythology. You know, justice was one of the virtues celebrated by Emperor Augustus. Since the 16th century, Lady Justice has often been depicted wearing a blindfold. The blindfold represents impartiality, the ideal that justice should be applied without regard to wealth, power, or other status. Let me repeat that. The ideal of the blindfold is that justice should be applied without regard to wealth, power, or other status. Justice is a word that has been, you know, seriously criticized, you know, in fact, can be described as a relative term because in, in itself, in some occasions, you know, justice is to one person, sometimes an end result of injustice to another. So in Nigeria, how, is just, how has justice fared? You know, what are the challenges of the justice system in Nigeria? What are the limitations and what steps need to be taken to make justice available and fair to all who are in search of it? Uh, a, a little, you know, um, Definition. Merrill Webster dictionary defines justice as the process or result of using laws to fairly judge and punish crimes and criminals. Going by this definition, it is clear and apparent that justice is still, to a large extent, you know, a foreign concept on many of the issues that we're grappling with in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, on the Global Rule of Law Index, <laughs> Nigeria ranks 108 out of 128 countries, 108 out of 128 countries, and 22 out of 31 countries in the sub-Saharan African, you know, sub African region. Again, let's talk about the rule of law. What's the rule of law? You know, the rule of law in plain terms implies that every person is subject to the law, including persons who are lawmakers, law enforcement officials, <laughs> and judges. In this sense, it stands in contrast to tyranny or oligarchy, where the rulers are held above the law. So now imagine again, the global ranking 
of Nigeria being 108 at 128 simply means that Nigeria is, you know, trending more towards a tyranny than, you know, a country that is, respects the rule of law. Now, what are issues responsible for this? Recent in-depth research carried out revealed eight major issues bedeviling the justice in Nigeria. The issues are one, the unforthcoming informants. I'm sure many of us have experienced that. Let's not even dive into that, you know. Number two, funding. Number three, corruption. Number four, training of investigating police officers. Number five, missing case files. Number six, delayed duplication of case files. Number seven, lack of forensic laboratories an insufficient number of trained forensic experts, and number eight, poor public records keeping. These are very obvious but very critical issues, and I advocate that the government should urgently look at these issues for a quick resolution with the aim of getting back our country into a more civilized society. Well, you, have, you asked a question, and I think I should, we should even start with that, that in your view, how has uh, the justice system fared? Mm. I think the justice system has been unjust. <laughs> <laughs> Point blank. But, you know, the justice system has been, it's, it's, people don't have confidence in the system. And that is a big scare. Because mm. no matter what you say, no matter what, it's like, your appearance matters. At times you judge a book by the cover. <coughs> That's one of the first experience you have. No matter what you say or do, it's, it matters a lot. The Nigeria's justice system, my biggest problem with the justice system is not just that you, you, the fact that you might not get justice, it's the process of the justice. And why do I say not the fact that you might not get justice? I've seen people who are ordinary people go to court with their facts and they've won cases that people have wondered, wow, so you could do this. There was a time I went to get a passport for my son, and when I got there, the man, I think I asked my wife to go, so I left her there or something. And the person there looked at me and said, wow, okay, both of you are here, I said, yes. Yeah. I said, why are you asking? And he told me, he said, last year, there was a case. Somebody sued immigration and won. Mm. Why? They had a family issue. The wife picked the kids, got passport for them, and took them out of Nigeria, mm. relocated. And the man wondering that, how did my kids travel abroad? They don't have a passport. Hmm. Realized that she did a passport for them without his consent. So he took immigration. And which is not it's supposed know, to be both parents, 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 yeah. both parents yeah. consent. In the normal legal exactly. process. Exactly. And he took the, the people wow. to the immigration to court. Of course, prolonged. Hmm. But he won. Hmm. So at that point, immigration, that was when they were very harsh and said, no, you must come. Both parties must come or um, sign and blah, blah, blah. Understand. What am I saying? I'm sure that has happened to so many people. And out of fear that I can't get justice, they haven't tried it. Exactly. And that's why I use the idea that when it doesn't look convincing, when you, you don't see, you're not able to have confidence in the system, then you let so many things go. And that is bad for our system. And, but like I said, the biggest scare for me is the fact that you start a process. And I think on this program, I, I spoke about the injustice of Nigeria's justice system <laughs> some time ago, where I said, listen, we all talk about the influence of the executive. That's even a lesser devil to what happens in the justice, justice system. Process, yeah. Because listen, I, to, I spoke about this, um, the kidnapper, uh, what's his name again? Um, Im, uh, is it Ima or what's his name? Evans. The one that, Evans. Evans. Yeah, that was arrested. I said, okay, when this guy was arrested, so many talks came about the, the, the crime he committed. People came, all the people he had uh, kidnapped came out and stuff. They were ready to testify. The case was solid. Within that time, um, Ipeba was charged to court, was accused of collecting bribe for fixing a match. He was charged. He lost the case. He appealed the case. I think he had the sentence reduced. Between that time, Judge, Flo I said Judge, Judge Floyd, yeah. his case came up. He went to court and came back. Between that time and now, uh, Bill Cosby was sentenced. The thing was tried. The sentence was reviewed. All this has happened. Yet, we are still in court over Evans's case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that has nothing to do with executive power or influence. This is just the process of the courts. So all the processes of our courts, people's non-challenge, the person who has to carry the file like we hear and says you have to pay me this or this is missing and that is missing, and that alone 
causes problems because we have fine judges who criminals are scared to get into their chamber, their courts. They know that mm. when they get into their courts, mm. they've lost. We have so many fine judges. Yet the system prevents and just causes a back and forth. And again, the way our police or our security agencies build cases makes a mockery of our justice system. Because some cases you go and you see in court and you're like, there is no, nothing in this that you can use in winning a case. So a lot of things, those things, if you're able to deal with this, then we'll be left with the executive arm of issues. And that will be amongst the big men. But for us as the average person, you can go to court and know that you have justice when you're fighting one man. They even, when you see average people on the street, they don't even have the confidence in going to courts. Even an average magistrate court, they would not attempt it because they feel you wouldn't get it. it. Even the way there. the officers there will speak to you, the composure of the magistrate, everything just puts you off. And these are the challenges we are faced with. Mm. Well, this is a very serious issue. Mm. But I will see this first. Ubi Josi be remains your man. I guess that's mm. what you want to say, right? Where there is justice, uh, Mr. Tolu, who be just EB remedium, hmm. right? Please, we're not in politics. I don't know about no, that. No, it's, uh, it's, 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 she's describing... <laughs> some heavy you, you are describing you, the, uh, the woman, the woman that, that is carrying the, uh, um, the balance. To me. Yeah, the woman carrying the balance and then the sword. Yeah. If you are found wanting, she cuts you. She's blindfolded because she's impartial. Even if it's her child, mm. she will still cut her child if, she, if the child is found <laughs> wanting. So that's why they say when there is justice, there is remedy, there is hope. It will be just be remedy. Mm. That's what is. So government exactly. should be of laws rather than of men. We watch movies, Nigerian movies, and I want to be specific, how justice has been carried out in a matter of weeks. But in reality, is it so? Mm. Is, it, is it supposed to be like that? Mm. You, get, you get to court a case that will take a year or a six months yeah. will be lingering for several years. Yeah. They keep back and forth. So people will lose confidence in the system. Exactly. There should be a total overhaul of the system. That is one. Number two, I remember I had the opportunity of interacting with one law student while I was in university some years back. And then they were, she was telling me that uh, in Nigeria, our system is advisory. Our justice system is advisory. Mm. Why in the U.S. is investigative? I don't know that you've had something like that. Mm. So can we, mm. can we have a clear distinction with the job of the police, another law enforcement agent, and that of the courts. But sometimes, I won't mention the name of some persons of interest that are currently facing charges now yeah. in high courts or supreme courts in Abuja now. Mm -hmm. And you hear cases like people are already manhandling them, government agencies, yeah. especially the DSS. We manhandle some of these people and almost treat them as though they were criminals, as if they don't have any rights on their own. Mm -hmm. And the, judge, the judges will be telling DSS, Please do it this way. Yeah, they will not listen. So, like, everybody should know where your power stops and where your jurisdiction stops and respect it. Mm -hmm. And the other person or the other arm should do what they need to do. Yeah. Let's make the system work. Enough of all this back, back and, and forth. forth. Mm. <laughs> it's more like a ridicule now. Mm. Mm. You know, Tolu, um, I'd like to just say that um, why, I mean, it's very interesting point that you've brought up, right? Mm. Um, why this hasn't really worked, right? Why it hasn't worked is because, and, and again, the, the offshoot of this is people are raped and they can't talk about yeah. it. You know, people are, you know, unlawfully defrauded, battered, you know, assaulted, physically abused. They can't come up because someone tells you the, the rape um, I mean, I don't know if, if that is the right word to say, rapist or something. Someone that has raped somebody is moving free right. and making noise about it and being proud about it. In fact, moved on with his life and the rape victim, you know, is just there. So the process, like um, Kay said, is really so long, right? Again, bringing technology, how do we even really le leverage for the legal system to bring justice quicker, faster, accessible, mm -hmm. you know, easier, seamless mm -hmm. to the people. Anything that stresses us as Nigerians, we, we want to avoid we're tired. it. We don't want that's to get no into because it. Mm. talk, 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 and nothing happens. So, and that's why I mean that's even the history of you know. Let me just run away. There's no need really because running away is easier than, than getting going justice. Through the whole process. <laughs> and you know, and you know, what, well, you know, and you know what even makes it difficult, which. We've all said, uh, I mean, alluded to it, but in a very silent way. Well, let's bring it out to the fore now, is that the first line of justice is not the court. It is the security agency. Exactly. So but whether, and when I say security, whether LASMA or, or last the, the uniform men, mm. whether LASMA, VIO, that's where you first experience justice. 
before you can now, you know, elevate it to the uh, going to court or whatever. And once you get that wrong, no, it will be difficult to believe in the court system. Well, if we have well, to talk for the country to be better, please, mm. let's keep talking. That is it. That's yeah, what we'll we just keep talking. Yeah. But okay. Tolu, we can go on and on. How do we bring this home? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, again... <laughs> We can go on and on with experiences and things like that. But I mean, I, I, I personally feel very strongly that new breed of people, um, whether we like it or not, they're going to emerge. People that you know, respect the rule of law, people that care about the rights of citizens. So we're talking about rights now, we're talking about the rule of law. And what is that? It's very simple. It just means that nobody's above the law. It's really as simple as that. True. You know, and the truth is there's nowhere in the world where they've gotten right 100%. We can see some level of progress. Mm. It looks like we have never started. It looks like we're still, you know, we're still a fetus. We don't even understand where we are. We don't even know where we are, you know. So, <laughs> Thanks, at dude. some point, you know, uh, yeah. people need to start making those, um, um, those are taking those actions that take us to where we need to go. Okay. Please, do stay with us. Elijah is next after the break. The necessity of transparency and timeliness in leadership. A stitch in time saves nine. This famous phrase couldn't have said it any better. Leadership is in all its entirety entails all spheres of discipline, servitude, and timeliness. Is it true that the year before ele election, the government seems to work effectively? It is ridiculous to waste limited time on activities that aren't central to the core of an administration. This, in every way, defeats the purpose of the opportunity to be saddled with such responsibility and comes off as poor decision-making and mismanagement. This pattern of the end minute execution is visible in poor administration and it comes along with the baggage of weak politicking and bad governance. The time frame given to every administrative office is given based on feasibility, planning and execution. Every time frame in an administrative tenure was structured to enable proper execution of the vision of the office and failure to follow these structures will lead to an irreversible lapse. Using a month to execute a project that should have taken years to plan properly and execute not only destroy the mission and outputs of the project but also destroys the reputation of the parties involved. To reduce the repetition of this ugly pattern, the following factors must be considered. Transparency in leadership, workable policies, vision that are scalable, timeliness in planning, effective monitoring and evaluation. When all these factors mentioned are being considered by those at the helm of affairs, there will be a decline in project execution lapses and fraud development and continuity in transparent and workable administration would be assured. Let's ponder on these words. The speed of decision making is the essence of good governance. Payish Goya is a politician and cabinet minister in the government of India. So Tolu, what do you think about this? As usual, ah, politicians. Okay. Um, for me, I think I think uh, you you've hit the nail right on the head. You know, there's just something magical about the year before election year. Mm. I'm sure you like noticed it. There's just something absolutely magical about it. So stuff that's not be able to be done in two three years. You know, the year before election, there's just some spirit of efficiency and excellence, you know, just jumps on our people. And things got to start to get done. Roads start to get done. You know, hospitals get built. Schools get renovated. Because, like Two-Face said, it's time to tell us another lie again. I mean, but I think there is a serious problem of orientation. You know, I say to people all the time, even leaders abroad, you know, in America, you know, in the UK, people that have done democracies for hundreds of years and are trained to be leaders, you know, 
to lead governance. They take courses in governance and leadership and strategy and decision making. Even these guys, many times they still falter and make mistakes. You know, in some cases they even fail woefully. Now that's someone that's been prepared to hold these offices. Now imagine someone that has no clue, no training, no orientation, no preparation except for speeches, you know, um, in many cases, senseless speeches that have been, you know, written by a more clueless person for him to basically recite. So how would that person fare? This is not rocket science. I mean, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. That's exactly the problem, you know, we're having with leadership. Transparency is not even something we should start to talk about because we need a whole show to talk about transparency and leadership. In, 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 you know, well, yeah. the timeliness, you said, timeliness, you know, is just a magical thing that happens when it's time for them to get our votes again. Mm. I'll wrap up with this. Someone has said that, have you ever thought about how come there are villages, you know, the settlements in Nigeria that never seen power before? They don't have power. They don't have water, you know, portable water. They don't have basic, basic essentials of life. But when it's time for election, a polling booth appears. Mm. in that location. A polling booth appears. But these are guys that have not seen power for years. But you can get a polling booth there when it's time to vote. Mm. And then what happens? Stomach infrastructure. Mm. You give them, you know, some like impoverished. So 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira guarantees with their votes for another four years. Mm. Well, you know, the, thank you very much, Tolu. The last time, I remember last week while I was, not last, last two weeks ago, I said something about KPDM living in the moment, fixing the current problem. You know, there was this, an instance, something that happened during the lockdown, the saga around the lockdown era, that the government actually gave items out, relief items, and some of these things were hoarded. And then some politicians had the effort to repackage this item using their own label. So they're using government property to campaign. Why? Because they're always thinking about the next election. You're not thinking about what are we going to do now to leave mm. unless the next election take you off yourself. So um, I know the strategies want to say something, but Mr. Karadeh, you have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have so much to say. Yeah, but you have a lot. How, I mean, when you listed the things that should be done, I was just asking myself, okay, do you think they don't know these are the things that yeah. should be done to be effective? I mean, not rockets. So. Well, you see, I will, there's a country, okay, Ghana, um, when it's getting close to election, that is when the people wake up and make demands. That's when the nurses will go on strike. <laughs> and they said that the, uh, the, the agreement they had four years ago or three years ago has to be met. That's when doctors will remember that this is happening. That's when all these institutions will start coming up. That's when you see communities tell politicians or the government that you promised to do this road. You didn't do it. It's four years and you're going for another campaign. We are not going to vote for you. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, if you don't make demands, make haste while the sun shines. Mm -hmm. The best time to strike is when the metal is hot. That's the best time to strike and get the shape you want from that metal. And that is what we are not doing. I always say that politicians, you see, politicians all over the world will always attempt to cut corners, even in America. If you listen to the news this year, last year, you'll have seen people that almost cut corners, did one or two things, and they were caught, and blah, blah, blah. But you see, in our own case is that we don't have a system that checks them. Then the people themselves are just used to, oh, don't mind them, they are foolish politicians. And they continue. Mm. So we need to look at all these things. Wow. Uh, the uh, strategy. I mean, <laughs> Yo, I want you to address it from a behavioral point of view because you know you're a behavioral um, coach. So why is this? It's, it's like a recurring decimal. Is it the year before election? Things seems to work very well. They now recently remember that oh, student need this, school needs this, mm. this one needs that. But why don't you fix this thing? Let it be like you solve this problem, and the next administration should move on from there. So. You know, I'm not a politician and, you know... <laughs> you I've, can't speak for that. I've, you know, I've never got into the seat of power. So as much as I have goodwill, I've, I've got some good value system, but I don't know how I'm going to act mm. yeah. under that pressure. 
you know, oftentimes we don't know, you know, what we're going to do and all of that. So for me, I think it's just rinse and repeat. Mm. So, and if the trigger is not fixed, it's going to continue being a rinse and repeat um, strategy. And this, any strategy that works, I mean, it's business sense. If it works, why do not need to change it? That's it. It's been working and they don't need to change it. And that's what I think. Mm. What? For us, we it's Nigerians, sad, I will, it it's important for us to focus on making the system works. Mm. When we make it work, then we shouldn't bother ourselves about what happens subsequently because you take care of yourself. Oluwa Kayode is next after the break. Blame the states not the federal government. As we approach 2023 elections, tempers are high. Many are agitated, but a lot more are confused. Our state of confusion is not new. It's been with us for so long. Our election lecturer, Kunle Lawal, has taken us through a series of mind-opening revelations on this program, identifying the rights, limitations, and constitutional responsibilities of each arm and each tier of government. But let me cut the chase and address this seemingly controversial topic. Blame your state, not the FG. It will look like I'm making excuses for President Muhammad Buhari, but for. But far from it. His tenure is coming to an end, and historically, not much happens during election year. My concern is more towards 2023. Who takes over from him? And how do we make them, the federal government, state, and local governments, accountable to us? 2022 budget summary, it goes this way. FG budgeted 17.1 trillion Naira, Lagos State 1.7, River State 483 billion, Kaduna State 278, Ogun State 350 billion, Adamawa 163 billion, Niger State 211 billion, and the list goes on. So let's work with a median value of 10 trillion Naira budget for all states. That's estimating uh, their budget for, at uh, 300 billion for each state, or let's even bring it out to 200 billion. That'll be like eight trillion naira. We're so concerned about FG budget performance, but how often do we query state budget performance? I saw an article about Governor Sawolu buying uh, high-speed trains from Spanish manufacturers in Milwaukee, USA. And yes, it's, uh, you know, it's been confirmed. Then I came across another report in 2016 where Governor Ambody was said to be about to buy off some trains for Lagos Red and Blue Rail line. The same one Governor Sawolu is about funding. What happened to the promise in 2016? What about the budgetary allocation? Or has it become an inappropriate appropriation bill? In Lagos, the government has the neighborhood security uh, outfit funded from taxpayers' money. The purpose is because security is local. How well do these institutions perform? What is the quality of the intelligence they gather? States and local governments have more roles than federal governments in any state in Nigeria. So where a lot of roads are not car worthy in Nigeria, it is most likely the faults of the states and local governments. Yet, all you hear is complain about how nothing is working in Nigeria and dump all the blame on Nigeria. By that, I mean federal government. Now to the elephant in the room, the economy. The escape route is we need to move some things from the exclusive list to the concurrent list. I'm trying to sound like a politician there. Many states cannot generate revenue because they do not have access to the rich resources of their land. That is just diversionary tactics to aid the inconsistencies and deaths of ideas plaguing our state's leadership. Before the discovery of oil, states survived on agriculture, groundnut pyramids in the north, palm oil plantations in the east, cocoa in the west. Now let's take western region. In the west, it developed with cocoa money, built cocoa house in Ibadan, set up WNTV, built Obafemi Olo University, and many others. Prudent management resources. I know you might say that cannot be replicated again 
Times have changed. Even abroad, in other states, states have control over resources. Truth is that I agree. States should have control over their resources. But let's look at the statistics. According to Texas Oil and Gas Association website, that's the texoga.org, Texas oil and gas industry made history when it paid $16.3 billion in taxes and state royalties in 2019, highest paid ever or thus far. Now, that is huge. I can only imagine what River State can do with that amount of money. But that's not all. Let's look at another statistic from the same state, Texas. According to data available on texasagriculture.gov, Texas government made $24 billion from agriculture products in 2017. Now, every state has control over agriculture. What are we doing in our states? We have control over traffic regulations. What do our roads look like during rush hour? How many new projects have we started to reduce travel time? I was having a conversation with a colleague and he reminded me that the last time a major project happened in Lagos was in the 80s when the third mainland bridge was constructed. I stand to be corrected though, but if that's the case, isn't that over 20 years ago? And if the red and blue rail line is not completed this year as promised, what would be said of Lagos, a mega city desiring special status? Now, one last thing before I go. Do you know that according to the Constitution, provision of electricity is in the concurrent legislative list and not the exclusive? State House of Assemblies can make laws for the state with respect to electricity and the establishment in the state of electricity power stations. The generation, transmission and distribution of electricity to areas not covered by the national grid system within the, that state and the establishment within that state of any authority for the promotion of management of electric power stations established by the states. There are mitigating factors, we, we must all agree, which the states can address if they so desire to provide electricity. But we will discuss this on another day. For now, long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Hmm. Well, well, I would say is the government <laughs> should try, state government specifically. Let me yeah. use Lagos as a case study. That's it. We spent several productive hours on the road. Whose fault is it? The federal government or the state government? Yeah. So if they mm. really want to generate more a revenue from the citizens yeah. who are working, the working class, they should work on reducing the number of times we spend on the road. Mm -hmm. So that's, we start with that. Okay, and we hold it on there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for me, it's very simple. I remember a classical match, I think it was El Clasico. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was El Clasico, but it was a very, you know, when Messi was still in Barcelona, okay. and you know, everybody wanted to mark Messi, but Messi was like the bait, you know, and the, 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 the person that they used, you know, um, I, I think it was Suarez or something, mm -hmm. right? Or either Suarez or the other Another guy, player, yeah. you know, and he was the one scoring the goals. And so the idea was to distract the defenders mm -hmm. with mercy. He wasn't going to be the hit man. And then everybody goes to him, then the hit man scores. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I agree with you. There's always this federal government, you know, you are the problem and all yeah. of that. And people are minute by minute extorting and sucking the state dry. dry. Why are we not holding our local government councillors. I mean, I say in Yaba, can't I say what 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 is the state of what's the, the, the level of progress yeah. you know about this? And yeah. I think to conclude on this is I myself I'm holding myself accountable. I need to start attending these meetings. That's when it. they call for it. So I leave oh there are some yeah. bunch of non intellectuals, let me drive off and go. Let but the intellectuals I need get involved. Get, get, I need to get <laughs> go to those meetings and you know know what is happening. Play, play your own role. Yeah. Yeah. The talk. Do you agree with us yeah, in the most states? Absolutely agree with you. I mean, th just think about it. Just, just look at the numbers. There's only one federal government, but there are 36 states. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, there's, there's corruption going on in the federal government. It's going on 36 <laughs> other places. So perhaps you, let's even take our eye away from that one federal government and focus on the 36 yeah. other people that can be responsible. That is not, like you said, you know, to 
let the federal government go in any way because in some cases, you know, the, 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 what's going on in that place, let's not even start. <laughs> but I actually agree with you mm. that people need to start getting involved in their state government, in their local government. I mean, there are things that you don't have to ask, ask the governor for. I go sometimes and ask myself, is there a chairman in this local government? Mm. Is there the councillors? You understand? I mean, in some cases, people are not responsible for little, little <sighs> things. Mm. Everything is not Buhari's fault. Mm. It well, a lot of things like anyways. That's it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like someone said, when a husband and wife fight, it's Buhari's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Everything. <laughs> if I fall down, it's Buhari's fault. When you throw dirt on the floor, it's <laughs> Buhari's fault. You know, and and, and the, 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 the reason, when I was putting this piece together, what came to mind is this man will be out in about 13 months, or let's say even 15 months, mm -hmm. thereabouts. Who comes next will start the same accusation the same cycle. for another four or eight years. And we, we, the people, remain the same. And I, I'm sure by then, the 5,000 you get, the value might have dropped to further, further to 2,000. So you're getting less. It's a rinse and repeat strategy. You, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, well, we can go on and on, but all we can say now is uh, thank you for your attention while the program lasted. And we hope that our conversation resonated with you and that in some small way encouraged you to contribute to your immediate environment. Little drops of water, they say, make a mighty ocean. Don't forget that advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, yes, Twitter is back, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate NG. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. Bye.